Dear Jess, There's nothing like a tiresome trip through the Brits abroad package holiday strip of Benidorm and Calpe to get the taste buds going. Now I'm as fond of a full English as the next hungry cyclist, but you know, got to keep the standards up. So with my gastronomic quest going absolutely nowhere, I'm actually now heading to an island. No, not Mallorca, Ibiza or any of that, but the tiny island of Tabarca, which you've probably never heard of, as neither had I until doing some detailed culinary research into the Alicante region. Now, as it turns out, Tabarca is home to one of the finest rice dishes in the whole land, El Caldero de Tabarca, which has the advantage of providing two dishes from the same preparation, as we'll see in a moment. The ferry takes 20 bumpy minutes from the touristy town of Santa Pola, but leaves you in another world. Now before I get to work on the Caldero de Tabarca, I need to get a very good sense of what I'm about to make. So this is the island of Tabarca. I'm off down there to find out about the local speciality. So I come to this Tabarca Island restaurant where they've been preparing this dish, or dishes, for generations. Generally known in Spain as Arroz Banda, these islanders have made it their own, El Caldero de Tabarca. So what we're dealing with is a first course of a fish stew, fish cooked in its own broth, and thickened with a lovely aioli sauce and served with potatoes. Now as a second course, all the remaining broth is used to cook the rice in a paella pan and so it's served apart, separately from the fish. And this is the meaning of arroz abanda, rice separate or on the side. So then, having had a few glasses of wine, which is most unusual for me, and not bothering to write anything down, I do hope I can remember all the instructions I was kindly given at the restaurant. And with nowhere on the island to buy fish, I head back merrily to the mainland and avail myself of all the required ingredients, ready for the next day. Back on the island, I choose this rocky cove as my kitchen. A quick spin around the ingredients, which you'll find written out in the video description below. Starting with this collection of rockfish, known as moraya, but really any white fish suitable for stock will do just fine. As usual, avoid the oily types of fish, such as tuna, salmon, sardines, mackerel, and that sort of thing. These are two slightly larger specimens, a John Dory, gallo in Spanish, and something else, but again, any similarly sized white fish will do the job just perfectly. Now these are to be served whole in the stew, and the other smaller ones just contribute to the broth. Now here, very importantly, are the Nyora dried peppers, which are crucial for all the rice dishes in the Alicante region. Again, you'll find notes in the description as to how to acquire them. These mild, dry peppers combined with garlic and tomato to form the paste known as salmoreta, which you can also get ready-made in a jar like this. The ingredients for the aioli, the garlic mayonnaise, peppers, potatoes and onions, all listed below the video. The very first thing to do then is to throw in our stock ingredients, covering the lot with water. Simmer this enough time to enjoy a couple of glasses of something refreshing and local, perhaps 20 minutes if you're counting. And strain to leave you with a fabulously powerful flavour base. The next task is to make the splendid, authentic paste I mentioned before called the salmoreta. Here's how. 
So remove the seeds from the nyoras and just break them up by hand into little pieces. Fry these pieces gently in a good slug of olive oil. And after a minute, add sliced cloves of garlic. When all this is soft and the garlic is beginning to turn golden, remove to a mortar and give it all a good bash until it's really nice and pasty. Then we grate the tomatoes in this ever so Spanish manner and fry the pulp in the same oil as the nuris and garlic. Add a pinch of pimenton Spanish paprika and stir around until well reduced and fairly thick. Mix in with the nyora and garlic paste. So now mix half of this smooth salmoreta into about half of the previously prepared stock, leaving the rest to cook the rice in later. Now the whole serving fish are dropped in with the potatoes and simmered until both are done. In my case, I perhaps should have given the potatoes a head start, as these smallish fish will be done in a matter of minutes. Now it's time to make the aioli. Crush up a couple of cloves of garlic into a paste and add an egg yolk and very slowly drizzle in the oil in the usual way. When the fish is cooked, remove to a serving dish and surround with a few potatoes. Thin out your aioli with a splash of the stock and stir back into the pan, but don't attempt to completely blend it in. Judging by my version I had in the restaurant, there should be visible lumps of this aioli in the broth. So first course done and served. Let's now prepare the rice. The remaining salmoreta is quickly fried in the paella pan and the rice, 100 grams per person, is stirred in. A little colorante orange food colouring, or even better saffron if available, is stirred in, closely followed by the broth. The usual measure is three times the volume of rice. Do check the broth for salt as the rice cooks. After 15 to 18 minutes at a good boil, the rice will have absorbed the liquid, but should still have a little bite to it. So I do hope you're inspired to have a go at this fabulous, genuine, authentic Caldero de Tabarca, generally known as Arroza Banda. Buen apetito desde Tabarca, Alicante. Hasta pronto.